All right, today we are going to talk about how energy is conserved during a collision. Um, and first, what we need to remember is that when we see the word collision, we want to immediately not think of energy, rather think of momentum. Because during a collision, we know that the total momentum before the collision must be still present after the collision. As long as there's no external force, like friction, um, acting on the objects. So when we see collisions, we normally think momentum, but we should also think about energy. We know that energy is always conserved, that sometimes it goes from being usable to non-usable when it gets dissipated. Um, but what we really want to look at here is that with our different types of collisions, we have different things that happen with our energy. For instance, the definition that we gave you of an elastic collision, we talked about elastic collisions as collisions that bounce. And so the idea for an elastic collision was something like maybe you have one pool ball coming in and hitting another pool ball that was at rest. And let's just do our easiest example. Um, maybe our first pool ball stops and so our second pool ball carries on with that initial velocity. Obviously, the momentum is going to be conserved during all of our collisions. We can call these objects one and two. Um, we can have this be V1 and this be V2. But we know that the momentum, when we add it together before the collision, has to be equal to the momentum when we add them together after the collision. So that simplifies down into the mass times the velocity of each object added together has to still all be accounted for after the collision. And so in this simple case where object two starts off at rest and therefore doesn't have momentum, and object one ends up at rest and it doesn't have momentum, we just kind of see the momentum transfer from object one to object two. Um, and so we can say, all right, there's my nice little elastic collision. The real definition of elastic is actually the idea that the kinetic energy is conserved during the collision. Something is only a perfectly elastic collision if the kinetic energy of both objects added together before the collision are equal to the kinetic energy of both objects added together after the collision. Notice I didn't say total energy, I said kinetic energy, that there is no gain or loss of kinetic energy during the collision. And so when we look at these equations, we know that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And so this would be for object one, one half mv squared for object two, and then one half mv squared afterwards for each object. And so again, this first time the second object was at rest and it doesn't have any kinetic energy. The second time the first object comes to rest and it doesn't have any kinetic energy. And so all the kinetic energy from one object transfers to the other object. And so if these really are pool balls of equal mass, um, all of the speed from one transfers to the other and all of the kinetic energy from one transfers to two. So our new definition of the word elastic is that the kinetic energy is the same beforehand as it is afterwards. That's what it truly means to be a 100% elastic collision. During an inelastic collision or an explosion, the inelastic collision or an explosion, we know that the momentum still has to be conserved. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe just break these down separately, I suppose. Um, let's look at our inelastic collision first. In our inelastic collision, we're going to have two objects, object one and object two. Maybe one of them's moving and one of them's at rest. And then the two of them hit 
and stick and move together at a new speed. Let's make these masses equal. Um, and so whatever this original speed is, is really going to cut in half for this final speed. And that's that idea that because our total momentum has to be conserved during any type of collision, we're going to see that M1V1 plus M2V2, when they hit and stick and move together, let's consider all of these objects as one mass moving at this new final speed. Remembering again that V2 was a speed of zero, we've got this idea that this first object has a momentum. And now the mass has doubled. When we add these two masses, that they're equal together, if that mass is doubled, then that speed needs to cut in half, right? Because the mass got bigger here, the speed has to be smaller here in order to make this equation equal. So if we double the mass, we have the speed, but our momentum is conserved, it's not a problem. The issue comes when you're looking at the kinetic energy. We're going to say, is the kinetic energy conserved during our inelastic collision? Well, remember that would be, we're testing, is K1 plus K2 equal, question mark, question mark, to K1 plus K2 after? And so we're looking at 1 half M1 V1 squared plus 1 half M2 V2 squared. And afterwards, we can really put this together as one half both of my masses moving together at my new speed squared. We're going to say that before the collision, V2 wasn't moving, so I have one half of my original mass times my original speed squared. And we're looking at question mark, question mark, are they equal to one half of now my mass has doubled, right? I have twice as much mass moving at half as much speed. So let's check this out with our proportional reasoning. If I have twice as much mass, how would that affect the kinetic energy? Well, twice as much mass, how would that affect my original kinetic energy? It would be twice as much kinetic energy. That's okay though, because my speed cut in half. So one half as much speed Oh, great, that'll cancel out, right? Wrong. Because my speed is squared, what we're gonna do here is say that cutting my speed in half actually gives me one fourth as much kinetic energy as I started with. So my mass doubled, my speed cut in half, and for my momentum, that's okay. Because for my momentum, if I double my mass and I cut my speed in half, I'm going to see that I get twice as much momentum and then one half as much momentum, my momentum stays the same. But down below, when I double my mass and I cut my speed in half, I have a problem. That two times one fourth is really one half my original kinetic energy is present after the collision. Here's the deal, is that kinetic energy is not conserved during an inelastic collision. And in fact, during all inelastic collisions, where the two objects end up moving together as one, during all inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is lost during the collision. So if you see an inelastic collision, an inelastic collision, we will say that the momentum is conserved, but we cannot say that the kinetic energy is conserved. That's important when we're solving these combination problems we're going to not use conservation of energy during an inelastic collision. We're gonna say some of my kinetic energy got transferred into heat and into sound. And so even though it's present in the universe, it's not present in these blocks anymore. Some of the energy decreases during this inelastic collision. 
as we look at an explosion here, we could say that during our explosion, that for an explosion, again, always our momentum is conserved. We might have two masses starting at rest, and then those two masses explode away from each other. They separate, really. That's what an explosion is. It's just a separation of masses. And so what we're going to do is say our total momentum beforehand, it has to be present afterwards. And that was because the forces are equal, the times are equal, the change in momentums have to be equal, no matter the type of collision. But when we look at this, we can say both masses together have our original speed. And afterwards, they separate, so they have their own terms. And we say, well, I start off with zero momentum because I have zero velocity. So how is it that afterwards my momentum is conserved? It's the idea that moving to the right is positive and moving to the left is negative, And therefore, this positive momentum will cancel out this negative momentum. And we're going to be OK that momentum is conserved. The issue is when we're looking at our kinetic energy, we're going to see, is the total kinetic energy beforehand equal to the kinetic energy afterwards? And the answer is immediately no. We can tell that there is no kinetic energy present to begin with. We can add both of our masses together at this original speed of zero. And so we have zero kinetic energy to begin with. So is zero going to be equal to 1 half mv1 squared plus 1 half mv2 squared? For momentum, because momentum is a vector and it has a sign attached to it, those vector signs cancel each other out. Kinetic energy is a scalar and the velocity is squared. So even though one of these is positive and one of these is negative, with that velocity being squared, I have kinetic energy of object one. I also have kinetic energy of object two. In fact, during all explosions, kinetic energy is gained. So we cannot say kinetic energy is conserved during an explosion. Kinetic energy is not conserved during an explosion. During explosion, kinetic energy is gained. Now, of course, we didn't create it, right? If this is a bomb, it was chemical energy. If it's a spring, the spring energy. We can still account where that energy came from. But what we have to do is be careful that during an explosion, energy is like added into the system from an outside force. During an inelastic collision, energy is taken out of the system due to the fact that those two objects hit each other. Only during elastic collisions can we say that the total energy present kinetically beforehand is going to be the same as the kinetic energy afterwards. So just because they bounce, bouncing isn't going to be enough to let us know that it's an elastic collision. They're going to ask you to prove it. Prove that it's an elastic collision. In order to prove that it's an elastic collision, you have to prove that the kinetic energy is the same before and afterwards. That's the definition now of elastic. Otherwise, if it's inelastic or if it's an explosion, we can say that for inelastic and for explosion, the kinetic energy changes as a result. So this kinetic energy is not the same before as it is after. In an inelastic collision, the kinetic energy decreases. And in an explosion, the kinetic energy increases. We will talk about how to apply that to problem solving in the next video.